Hi everyone and welcome to Let's Get Medical. This mini medical video is part one in a series of videos on the Gell and Coombs classifications of hypersensitivity. Today we will be primarily discussing type 1 reactions under this classification. Hypersensitivity reactions are simply put the body overreacting to a stimulus and the immune system's excessive response causing damage to our own tissues and this can happen by differing mechanisms. Gell and Coombs classifies this reaction by underlying mechanism, of which there are four. When considering a hypersensitivity reaction, there are a couple of things to think about. Firstly, which antigens are going to be involved? And secondly, which antibodies or body cells are involved? Within each hypersensitivity, these will be different, so asking ourselves which elements take part is important to help identify the type. Next, it's important to note that some hypersensitivities can occur in minutes, whilst others take a few days to occur. This timing is important to consider in either an exam or a clinical situation. Now, on to type 1 hypersensitivity. This particular type is inappropriate activation of the antiparasitic leukocytes in response to environmental antigens. This type of reaction is most common in allergic reactions to medication or food, and is one of the most common in clinical practice. Many of you might be affected by this hypersensitivity on a daily basis if you're allergic to nuts or pollen. In very basic terms, the series of steps involves an antigen-presenting cell coming across the allergen, which starts a cascade through which T helper cells and B cells become activated, resulting in the production of IgE antibodies. These antibodies then attach to cells, which degranulate, releasing their contents, such as histamine and interleukins, and these are the main mediators of the symptoms experienced by someone suffering from an allergic reaction. Right, now that we've done a brief overview, let's take a step-by-step -step look at the process. The first part of type 1 hypersensitivity is sensitization. It is necessary in order for the process to occur. An antigen-presenting cell, such as a dendritic cell, comes across an antigen or allergen and engulfs it. Then it displays part of the allergen on its major histocompatibility complex 2, or MHC2, receptor. Next, the antigen-presenting cell takes its MHC2 receptor with the fragment and uses it to bind to an inactive T helper cell via the T cell receptor, or TCR. The active T helper cell then releases interleukin-4 and interleukin-5, and activates a B lymphocyte, which begins to produce IgE after stimulation. This is a key step as the entire reaction is mediated by the presence of IgE antibodies. It is these antibodies which then help the mast cell detect and respond to the antigen or allergen. The IgE binds to a mast cell using the FCER1 receptor. The IgE produced is specific to the antigen and this step is the end of sensitization. Now, when a mast cell, or any other type of granulocyte for that matter, encounters the same antigen, it can bind to the IgE antibody and cause the mast cell to degranulate. This is the second part of the process called re-exposure. On re-exposure, many granules are released by the granulocytes. These granules contain molecules which have various effects on our body. The main one of these is histamine, which uses the H1 receptor on the smooth muscle of the airways in order to cause bronchoconstriction, which is why many people suffering from an allergic reaction will have difficulty breathing. Histamine, along with interleukin-4, can cause increased mucus production, and histamine on its own, again, binds to H1 and H2 receptors present in blood vessel cells and cause vasodilation. These effects are what we then see clinically in the form of an allergic reaction. In type 1 hypersensitivity, an allergic reaction can be either systemic or localized depending on the type of exposure and the level of sensitization that has occurred previously. The most severe systemic reactions manifest as an anaphylactic shock, with a body-wide cytokine release causing multi-system inflammatory response Examples of this seen in different systems include vascular shock resulting in a massive drop in blood pressure, bronchoconstriction resulting in difficulty breathing, 
a widespread urticarial rash in the skin, and tissue edema. Particularly of concern in clinical practice is laryngeal edema, which may result in large airway obstruction. In milder cases of type 1 hypersensitivity reactions, more localised symptoms may be seen, such as increased mucus production and inflammation in hay fever, and acute shortness of breath secondary to bronchoconstriction in asthma. So now that you know everything there is to know about type 1 hypersensitivity, we can go back to the considerations that we thought about at the start of the video. What antigen is involved? And in this case, that is an individual extrinsic allergen. What cells or antibodies are taking part? In this case, that is the APC, the T helper cell, the B cell, mast cells, and IgE. How quick does the body take to respond to this? Typically in type 1 hypersensitivity, this would be rapid onset, often within 30 minutes. And what are some examples clinically that we see this in? Anaphylaxis, allergic asthma, and hay fever being the most common. This has been type 1 hypersensitivity from the Gel and Coombs classification. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to get more medical education more often, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. Feel free to leave a comment with your suggestions for future videos.